When it comes to self-defense, what's the very first move that you ever learn? Whether it's from your dad when you were younger or whether it's your first day of martial arts school, you always learn how to punch. And that punch is always with your fist, usually the front two knuckles of your fist if you're going to like a martial arts school or something. However, when it comes to in a real street fight where you don't have a padded opponent, where you are, it's just you and somebody else duking it out, a punch is a very dangerous blow to throw. And I'll explain why. When, they, when you're facing somebody in a real fight and they've got their guard up and they know, that they know the fight is on, if I go to punch with my hand like most people do, most people go for that for that, uh, that haymaker punch with their fist. If you watch any videotape of fights caught on tape, you're going to find these guys just swinging away like this, trying to, trying to hit the head. Well, the head ha it holds the most important organ in the body, which is the brain. And it's designed to protect that brain as bulletproof as possible as it can, as it can possibly get. So, when I go to punch this person, generally somewhere in the head, what ends up happening? Well, the brain is designed to protect itself too. So when his eyes notice that there's an attack coming, even if I were trying to punch him in the nose or the side of the face or whatever it may be, what ends up happening is when I go to throw, the, the chin naturally ducks down. Go ahead and turn the other side here just for... The chin naturally ducks down to protect the throat and protect the eyes, those, those major, like, most vulnerable targets on the face. So what ends up happening is while I go to his head, I'm going to inevitably, probably most likely, hit him somewhere in a hard part of his cranium. When that happens, that fist that I just balled up here, these, fir these first two knuckles, are going to get nailed. It's like hitting a wall. And if you've ever been in a fight and you know that, if you've ever hit something really, really hard, like somebody in the head or something, you know that maybe you don't even notice it right then and there when you hit somebody, but later on you notice that your fingers are, your, your knuckles are all bruised up. Well, the harder you hit somebody and the harder target, the worse that reaction is going to be. Okay? So, I don't want to strike with a fist as my primary striking tool because, number one, the pain associated with it. If I go to throw and I hit him, and I, and I hit those knuckles, I can experience the pain there, and I take away my primary striking tool that I'm used to using. Second of all, if I do really hit him hard enough, I can break the structure. If I break these knuckles, I lose the function of these fingers. Whatever I hit with, I lose that function. So, any other strikes that my brain is still saying, no, just keep punching, keep punching, are not going to be as effective as because when I hit, no matter where I hit him, I'm hitting him, my, my, my brain is sensing this is already taken out of the fight. This is danger zone. So I can't hit as hard. I don't have the structure to hit as hard when I hit this person. The other thing that comes into play is that when I hit him, if I break these knuckles, if I lose function in these fingers, then when I, if I need to go to a, I, I need to elevate the, the threat level more, and I go to pull out a a knife, if I've got a combat folder, especially something like that, and I don't have function of these fingers, I can't grip this as easily. And trying to get this open is going to be very, very difficult and difficult to hold on to. Even if I have it open, even if I have a fixed blade, not being able to use those fingers and they're all kind of crippled up and you can't, you, you literally cannot grasp onto something, I'm not going to be able to use that weapon effectively. Same thing goes if you have, you're a concealed weapons carry person and you have a, a, a handgun, if you don't have those knuckles, perhaps you might not even be able to pull that trigger. You're going to be sitting here with two hands trying to go back and forth here. So you don't want to give up your use of other weapons that you might have as alternatives. Your better options for the striking are to use, uh, are to use parts of your body that are not going to be damaged if you hit something hard. Namely, the top three are palm heel. You can hit to the same place anywhere you would with a, with a punch, you can do with a palm heel. But if this time if you hit something hard, it doesn't matter. You're, it's not gonna, it's not gonna break anything there. So you have palm heel. You have hammer fist, same thing. If I hit, I miss something, hit something hard, boom, it doesn't matter. It's, it still has a lot of power in here and it's not gonna injure anything. The other thing is the edge of hand, just the, the traditional karate chop here. Just coming in, same thing, you can go to the side of the neck, you can, even if you hit the side, even if you hit the top of the head, you can, you can hit a pressure point there, it's not gonna hurt your hand. So those are three better options than the punch in a real fight. This segment's brought to you by CloseQuartersCombat.com. Discover how to defeat even the most violent street criminals regardless of your size, strength, or experience at CloseQuartersCombat.com.